If you've used gdevelop, then you've seen this platformer example before. What you have not seen is this platformer with a dash. This video, I will show you how to do this dash using the Shadow Clones extension and, of course, the logic for the dash. Let's get started. Hey guys, this is Tristan with Victorious Games. I want to thank my friend Helper Wesley, who was curious about how I made this horizontal dash. The dash is, uses a tween, and it also maintains your Y value so that you stay horizontal like this. Also, it uses the Shadow Clones extension. I would say it's not hard and it's not easy, it's somewhere in the middle. So the first piece of code I have is dash delay timer which I set for one second. I have a variable, it's an object variable. It lives on the player hitbox, which is what the platformer example game uses to control the player. If the dash delay is longer than one second, it will set the variable can dash to one. That basically means you can dash once every one second. Here's where the actual dash happens. If you push the X key and the variable can dash equals one, but the first thing I do is I save the uh, Y value in this variable. The variable is also an object variable. Your Y value will be during your dash. And I basically save what the current uh, Y value is. And then I set it so that you cannot immediately dash again. So this will basically make it so that you have to wait one second, which is the first event. And that this is the timer, the dash delay timer. Uh, I'm using the same jump wave file. Um, you can obviously use a different sound if you wanted the dash to sound different. And this is where the dash happens. I said it was a tween. We were between the X position, which is the left left and right. So first thing I do is I actually have two statements. One is if you're facing left, one's if you're facing right. So if you, this this statement says if it is not horizontally flipped, so that means that the player is facing the normal direction, which is right. Between the X position of the player hitbox to its current position plus 300 pixels to the right. And it uses this thing called an easing, which is um, basically controls how fast it changes. The ease out quad goes fast and then it has a slow ending. So it starts out fast and ends slow. And I like that because it gives you a split second to see where your dash is going to end and it gives you time as a human to react. I let the dash, uh, the dash only takes 500 seconds, 500 milliseconds, so that's half a second. I give the name of the tween dash. Now this is kind of the exact same thing except for if the player is horizontally flipped, that means the player is facing left. Now I want to go the opposite direction. So I'm going to tween the X position to where it is currently, which is player X minus 300, which is makes the character go left. So this next event is where we do the shadow clones. I'm going to actually disable it to show you what it would look like without shadow clones. So this is the dash without shadow clones. It also doesn't include the logic to keep your player at the same Y value. This is the event that does the shadow clones and it also makes your Y position static during the dash. So while the tween dash is playing, which is only going to be 500 milliseconds. It's going to create and animate 10 copies of this object called Shadow Clone that follows the position of the player. So I should probably explain. To create the Shadow Clone object, all I did was make a duplicate of the player, and I called it Shadow Clone. It's going to create 10 of those Shadow Clone objects, and they're going to follow the position of the player. There's going to be one empty frame between each of the Shadow Clones, and the fading of the opacity between the clones will be 25. So the reason I picked 25 is that with 10 copies, 10 times 25 is 250. There's only 255 values of opacity, so they'll be basically faded out to nothing. And then this last statement is where I set the Y position of the hitbox to stay static during the dash. It's that value that I saved as soon as you push X. Uh, one thing that you need to know about t using a tween on an object is that it will keep moving and it doesn't always honor the collisions like normal movement does. 
it will try, but it, it can easily fail. I'm going to disable this mechanism I do to, to fix this problem. So if you tween into a wall, you can easily go into it and fall. Same, same as here, like you can go through this. That's normal for a tween because it's just moving you until the tween is over. And it kind of kind of overrides all the other um, behaviors like the platformer behavior, which is what is normally keeping you away from these objects. So we need to do something to stop that from happening. Yeah, you can get stuck in the middle like that. And uh, obviously that's not what you want in the game. So the way that I stop it is I detect if I'm about to run into something. This event, the condition starts off with first, if the dash is in progress, because we don't want to do all this extra work if the dash isn't happening. So only when the dash is happening, we're going to check for one of these conditions. You see how there, it's looking for a, the player hitbox, which is this red object, or the point that's called uh, dash high right, dash high low, dash high mid, mid right. Let's look at the object and see what that looks like. So I added these points. You just double click on your, your object and click edit points. So I created these three points, dash high right, low, and mid. And it's kind of hard to see, but there's one here at the top, one here in the middle, and one here at the bottom. And you'll notice they're all outside the actual hitbox. So the normal collisions happen in the hitbox. But these will hit before this hits. And that's how we're going to detect when the tween is about to invade an object. So we have time to stop the tween. And I do a top, middle, bottom just in case there's like a block. Like if you're jumping and a block hits you the head or just the feet or just like a, uh, a skinny block that just hits you in the middle. And that's why I did three different uh, detection points. So the event checks for all of these three collisions. And if any of them are hit, it will stop the tween immediately. And it has to reference the same name that we, the dash name we used. So that will stop us from running into objects. And the cool thing about um, these points are, you saw they were only on the right side. If you, if you face left, like uh, if the object is flipped, the points flip with it. That's why when I go left, it also stops it. I did have to add this to the platformer so that the player hitbox flips as well as the actual sprite of the player. The last thing we did is we have to delete our shadow clones when the dash is happening. So right now we are doing, while the dash is playing, we are creating and animating our shadow clones. We also need to clean them up when the dash is over. So when the tween dash has finished playing, we delete all the shadow clones that are linked to the player. Let me uh, disable this event and you'll see what happens if you don't clean up your dashes. It'll leave some of your, actually it leaves all, it leaves all 10 of your shadow clones behind on the screen. Just remember to clean them up. It's easy to do. I did throw in a couple other improvements to this platformer example. When you touch a checkpoint, you'll notice that it grows. And this is how I do it. I tween its scale, the Y scale. So that's just, just the height only. I'm not changing its width. I'm tweening the Y scale of the checkpoint to two. So that goes from one to two, basically doubling its height. Easing of linear, which means just a, a slow, steady growth and takes a half second. I also have to move it up because if you just tween the scale of it, half of the scale will go up and part of the scale will go down and it'll be buried in the ground. So we actually had to move it up a little bit. Oh, and I added a uh, fun wave. If you haven't done sound creation in GDevelop, it's pretty fun. So if we want to edit this file, you can just click edit. This is similar to what we did with Piskel for editing a sprite. So this is JFXR, which lets you do really neat, amazing things with sound. And this is the sound I did that makes the, when the cactuses are growing. And I think what I, the way I found it was I just did a bunch of different if you click on these on the left, it'll create kind of um, a template for what a jump might sound like. And you can go through them. And if you find one you like, you can go back in history. You're welcome to change any of these values. 
mutate takes the one that you found and does something similar to it. And so they have a uh, power up, explosion, lasers, coins, and random. Feel free to play around with GFXR. That's how I created the sound of the cactuses. Oh, and the very last thing that I added was a little trophy at the end. And what I do there is I make the trophy go up about 100 pixels. So I take the, the value of the trophy and I go up minus 100. Ease out quad. That is also a uh, go fast at first and then slow at the end. And that takes a half second to go up. And then I make the angle go to 360, which is basically a one full loop. Linear, which is a steady movement, that takes one second. And then the last thing I do is I fade it out to zero with an ease in quad. The ease in is going to go slow first and fast at the end. And that takes 1.5 seconds. And I will mention also that it doesn't show it on the sentence, but if you double click on this event, you have the option to just destroy the object when the tween finishes. And I say yes. That's actually what deletes the trophy. And you get 500 score and the same coin sound. That's all for today, guys. I hope you had fun, and let me know if you have any ideas on how a dash can be improved. See you guys next time.